One of the biggest issues that I always felt the Stability AI team had when developing these models was the commercial applications of how they set themselves up versus what the community was doing. That by releasing open models like SDXL, we were able to build tools on top of it, such as ControlNet, the ability to inpaint, IP adapter, and many other ways that allowed us to customize and fine tune the output that we were getting specific to the needs that whatever the user required. And this was one of my biggest gripes when Flux released their Pro series of models. Models that are questionably better than the dev version that was released, but lacked in the ability to give it control and nuance specific to what you were doing. So for example, let's say I wanted to use the model to inpaint articles of clothing, or I wanted to reuse a specific character or restyle a particular image. Those tools were not available to us on the Pro models because they run exclusively on the Black Forest API and their partners. On the flip side, we had the dev models, which had all of these amazing tools created by the community for them, but the commercial usage has always been questionable because of the license that comes with those models. Well, it looks like Black Forest is looking to address those issues with the release of a bunch of new models, including two new image generation models as part of the Pro line that, that improve on some of the issues that people have been having with Flux generated models, as well as a bunch of tools that bring control neck, IP adapter, and in painting to the Pro line of models. So let's just dive right into them. So these were released a few weeks ago, but I haven't had time to cover them. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity to just do it all together in this video. And Flux has released two new models, the Pro Ultra and Raw models. And to keep it simple, they are built on top of the already phenomenal Pro 1.1 model, but are, I guess you could call them fine tunes towards certain styles of image. The raw mode or the raw model is basically meant to make the flux images look like they've been shot from an iPhone. They're a little bit more homey, less edited, overall just not having that professional vibe, hence the raw name. Whereas the Pro Ultra model is about taking what Flux 1.1 can do and making it bigger. The Pro Ultra model is able to go up to four megapixels, meaning that those Flux images that you're generating are four times bigger and more pixels means more opportunity for details. What's more, the Flux teams claims that these models will run at an exceptionally fast pace and even more competitive price at $0.06 per image. However, what more than anything, we'd love to see these capabilities come down to the dev model. Now, the raw mode is not too difficult to do as that is really just a fine tune. However, the ability to generate images at four megapixels locally would be a massive step in the right direction for the open source community. Only time will tell if these models do become available to the rest of us, but you can bet we'll be on top of that as soon as it comes out. Now, the incredibly exciting thing that we're gonna cover today is the release of the new Flux tools. In today's video, we're just going to do a brief overview of all of the tools, go over a few comfy UI workflows, and over the next week, I will put out more detailed video where we dive deeper into each of these tools and what we can do with them, what their limitations are. So if that's something you're interested in, please do like and subscribe and stay tuned. And if you want to get these videos sooner, please check out my Patreon where they will be released 24 hours ahead to my patrons. So as mentioned earlier, the purpose of these tools is to bring the ability to provide a little bit more control to users when using the Flux models. Now, the great thing is, unlike the Pro Ultra model, they have released versions of these to the open source community in the form of dev models. However, there are also Pro versions which you can access via the API. And like with the 1.1 Pro models, they come with the Pro license, meaning that you can use them commercially. You don't need to think about it. Just use the API and you're good to go. However, for many of us, we like the dev models because we plug them into our comfy UI workflows, which allow us to create more complex use cases for these models. And not to mention the fact that with the dev models, we can fine tune them into custom LoRa's, something that we still can't do with the Pro API. So running through the new tools pretty quickly, we've got in painting and out painting with Flux One Fill. And we've got a pretty straightforward example here where we've got this person in a suit, the jacket is in painted and it's now become a denim jacket. They also show us here how the in painting works phenomenally for signs and how it picks up the context around the image. The out painting also works very well. They've just got this image here and it opens up to all of this. And we can see here some information about the benchmarks where they claim that both 
the Pro and Dev models are best in class. So let's jump into Comfy UI and test that out. Before we get started, there's a couple of things that we need to do to install the model correctly. I've got the links down below, but you need to head over to the Hugging Face link of the Flux One Fill Dev. Head on over to Files and Versions, and you need to grab this Flux Fill Dev Save Tensors model. It is 23 gigs, so it is quite big. And if you've already got the Flux Vay installed, you're good to go. And you're gonna go ahead and put this into your unit folder along with your Flux Flux Dev or your Flux Dev Q6 model. The great thing about this is that this is its own model, so you don't need to use it in conjunction with your Flux Dev model. It will work instead of Flux Dev. And we can see that here from the workflow, this is the standard one provided by the Comfy UI team, where we just load up the dual clip loaders. You've got your prompt over here, feed it into Flux Guidance, and then we use this in paint model conditioning node before feeding it into a regular K sampler. So it's a little bit different from the standard Flux workflow. We then load a diffusion model where we load here Flux Dev, Flux Fill Dev, feed that into a differential diffusion node and then into the K sampler. And then the rest of it is pretty standard. So let's go ahead and load up an image. We're going to grab the example image that they've provided as well. Let's grab here the in paint. So let's load that up here. So we've got this image here. And what we're going to do is we'll try a couple of in painting examples. First, we're going to try and get rid of our character and then we'll try and add something to her. So to access the canvas, just go ahead and right click it, open in the mask editor and go ahead and paint her in. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and save that to node and that will send both the image and the mask over to the in paint conditioner. And then we're just gonna go ahead and put here natural landscape and go ahead and queue. Now, as usual, because I'm running all of the tools as well as a few more complex workflows, which I'll show you guys later, I am running it on RunPod. And for this particular video, I'm not actually using a 4090. I'm using it on RTX 6000 ADA, which is only costing me 88 cents an hour. So if you are having issues at home running these tools or you're hitting VRAM issues, or you just don't have a 3090 or a 4090 or even a 4080, 3080, RunPod is a phenomenal way to get started with using Comfy UI and you get all the flexibility of customizing it however you want. If you do want to use RunPod, I have a one-click installer, which is linked down below, as well as a referral link. Nope, this is not sponsored, but if you do use RunPod and you do use the link, it does help give me credits, which I can then use to make more videos. If you do want to use this locally though, I will have on my Patreon a one-click installer for not just Comfy UI, but it will also download all of the models and components for the Flux tools, because there's a lot of stuff in there that you need to download. It'll all happen automatically. It's and we'll have it for Windows, Mac, and I think Linux. So if you're interested in that, please do come by the Patreon. Patreon for this video is gonna have a ton of stuff. And boom, there we go. That's some pretty effective in painting. So if you had a Photoshop subscription and you were just using it for that, I think you can get rid of it because this is pretty good. Not as fast, but just as good. Now, now let's go ahead and try and introduce something. So we're gonna go ahead and load up this image once again. Let's open it up in the mask editor. And this time we're gonna get rid of our mask. So clear the mask. This time let's draw something up here in the sky. Let's just save that to node. And just pop in here an airplane. And let's send that over to generate. And there you have it, an airplane. Now, uh, this is not the best execution as it does look like I've just opened up Photoshop and stuck it on there. But overall, I mean, is there in painted airplane? I will also mention one important thing when looking at in painting. Unfortunately, I don't have the RG3 compare node installed in this particular instance, but you can still illustrate it here fairly well. One of the things that I've noticed that happens with in painting and out painting is it appears that the image or the area of the image that's not masked gets downsampled and then re upsampled as part of that in painting process. And I don't know if you can see it very clearly here, but the image on the left has a little bit less artifacting or pixelating compared to the image on the right. There's definitely a slight degradation in image quality in the rest of the image, which is very unfortunate because the in painting tool is actually very powerful. So to combat that, I, uh, I've put together a version of this workflow, which adds in a stitching component where effectively all it does is crop the area that is going to be in painted and then restick it back on top of the original image, allowing you to maintain the quality of the original image. This is also incredibly useful if the original image is huge, which means that the time for in painting and processing is going to be a lot smaller and a lot easier on your GPU. So I highly suggest you use it. That will be available on the Patreon. So that's in painting. 
How about outpainting? For outpainting, we're trying something a little bit different. Let's go ahead and upload the image. Now, the next step is we need to obviously pad the space for outpainting. So let's add in 400 off of the top. Okay, that gets fed into the in-paint model conditioning. All of the parameters are here and we should be good to go. And there you have it, the outpainting created by Flux. Now, there's a couple of issues on this, which I am currently investigating. I don't have a workflow that addresses these just yet. However, once I do, I will post a link for it as I think it's something that everybody needs to keep in mind. If you have found a solution for this, please do come by the Discord and share it with us as I'm sure a lot of people there will find a lot of value. One of the issues with Flux Outpainting is the way the outpainted area blends with the in-painted area. Now your mileage may vary depending on the image, uh, but we can see it very prominently here on the right and a lot less on the left. And what I mean by that is if we see over here, the skin of the original image is very textured and we can see here a fixed line delineating where the in-painting happened. And it's very kind of obvious. So one of the things that we want to do is improve the feathering and the way that this is composited so that we get a little bit more of not just a natural look, but a natural progression from the original image to the outpainted area. However, that is a lot less prominent if we look up here at the top, particularly in the hair area and definitely here on the left where the in-painted area is just the background. And even down here at the bottom, it's only because we're really looking for it that we can kind of see it here in the neck area but I would say it's almost unnoticeable. The area where it's really quite obvious is over here on the face in this right area over here. So that is something to keep in mind. It is something I'm working on. And like I said, I'll make that workflow and the solution available once I have it. Like and subscribe, I'll probably post it as an addendum either in the comment section below or on my blog. Next, let's have a look at Canyon. Now, if you've used ControlNet before, the implementation here is a little bit different to what you might be used to. Like the in-painting model, Canny is set up as a dedicated flux model. The same thing applies to the depth model. So these all sit in your unit folder. To make use of it, we use the dual clip loader. And once again, you can offset the T5 out to CPU if you are short on VRAM, right? The clip feeds into your prompts, your positive one feeds into flux guidance. And instead of having the usual three and a half, this time it's set to 30. And again, we can use this to adjust the intensity of the flux canny. Then we're feeding the conditioning into an instruct pix to pix conditioning, which if we remember earlier, we had a similar node for end painting into this instruct pix to pix and we fit in, we feed in the canny. So if we come down over here, we can see that we're loading in an image. We use this canny node to convert it into the canny lines, output to a preview image, and also into the instruct picks. Then the positive and negative uh, conditioning along with a latent image, which would probably be the canny that we feed into pixels already injected into the latent space. And then all of that goes again into a case sampler along with the load diffusion model. Unlike in painting, we don't have another node between this. It just feeds in straight into the case sampler. And then of course we have a VE decode. Also worth noting here is that the CFG is set to one. So I tested this earlier. Uh, I'm going to upload a face and we're just going to use this as an opportunity to change up the face a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and grab there, type in here. And again, we can adjust the threshold on the canny to tell it how much detail we want in the lines. Let's go ahead and queue that up. And we can see here already the first version of the canny. Now, this is not as detailed as I would like. So let's go ahead and crank up the threshold. For canny, the lower the number, the more detailed you're going to get. So let's bring that down to like a six. A little too much detail. Maybe we crank it up slightly more. There we go. That's a good number to work on. And there we have it. Here is the before and after. And I have to say it's a very impressive result from the canny. Right? And in case you don't know what a canny is, it basically is turning line art into a image. And what you can do a lot of the times is put in a source image as we've done here. It gets turned into line art using the canny node. And then you get a completely new image with a lot of similarities from the original one. You know, the, the pose is the same. The facial structure is the same. The position of elements are the same. But whatever's not a line, essentially what's between the lines is what gets redrawn. Okay, and depth pretty much works in exactly the same way. So if we move this over here to the side, we change this out over here to depth. And then down here at the bottom, we just want to change the canny node out for a depth node. 
Uh, unfortunately, I don't believe there is one that is default with Comfy UI. However, there's a lot of great depth nodes out there like TikTok's Depth Anything that creates incredibly detailed depth maps. Another interesting model that has come out very recently that might be worth trying out as well is the ML Depth Pro from Apple. I have not tested it out myself, but they do say here that the model is very good at catching these very, very small details and incorporating them into the image. So. There is definitely a node collection here. I will dive deeper into it when we create the canny depth video that I have coming up. Let me know down below if this is especially interesting to you. Okay, so we've installed depth anything. And fortunately, the nodes are incredibly simple. It's just the download and load depth anything v2 model and the depth anything v2. So we're going to go ahead and feed in this image of a shark, change it out for the input. And let's go ahead and change it to anime shark and run it. Now, if you're using the depth anything nodes, it will take a little while for the first iteration to run as it does need to download the model. Once it has it, it, it will work a lot faster. And there you have it. We have our anime shark made from the depth map. Now, it's worth noting that both the depth and Kani models come in a LoRa format. We can see it here, Kani Dev LoRa, Kani Depth LoRa. I will dive deeper into these in a separate video, but as per my understanding, we should be able to mix these with other LoRas or even together to try and create really detailed results. I need a little more time to experiment and see what we can make use of this, but the options are there. Next, we've got Flux Redux, which for all intents and purposes, this is basically Black Forest Labs interpretation of IP adapter. Effectively, what's happening here is you're feeding in an image to the Redux model. It's using clip vision to understand it and turn that into conditioning for your prompt. So if we have a look at what's happening here, the main thing is, is that there are two models in play. One is the SIG Clip Vision Patch 14384, which is a Google Clip Vision model. Again, link will be down below into this apply style model node, along with the load style model, which is our Flux Redux or IP adapter type model, along with some conditioning, which would be this Flux Guidance to the basic guider, along with your Flux dev model. Everything else is a pretty standard Flux model. However, because in this particular workflow, we are using a whole bunch of additional models. We're using the Google Clip Vision. We are using the Redux model as well as Flux dev. 24 gigs may be a bit of a strain and definitely 16 will. To help along with that, you are able to split the dual clip loader to your CPU. There's a node for that. And you can even go a step further and use the FP8 model. All of those Little tweaks should help you if you're running into GPU issues. Here's a quick example of a image style that I applied using the Redux. And here's an example of a face that I used to apply to a new image using the Redux. One more thing I did do, which I will clean up before I issue it, is a version of this workflow where we combine the Redux and in painting to try and apply a article of clothing to a character. Again, if that's something you're interested in, this version of the workflow will be available on the Patreon. And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys found this video helpful, but in today's video, there's just a whole bunch of extra goodies which are available there, but not to worry if you are not able to support me on Patreon, we still have all of the base workflows available for free, which are also linked down below as well as all of the instructions and installable guides. If you do decide to pop over to the Patreon, thank you so much. Your support is greatly appreciated. And please do come by the Discord and talk about your experiences, what you've tried, what you've not tried. I hope you guys found this helpful. Thanks so much. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay tuned for the deep dive videos for each of the Flux One tools. Thanks so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.